In today's video, we'll talk about fasting and the effects it has on polyphasic sleep adaptations. Uh, we'll talk about different forms of fasting, whether fasting helps you adapt or makes it harder, how it affects monophasic sleep and more. Stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So we're going to start off by determining what actually fasting is. Okay, fasting is the time period when you don't eat, which usually aligns itself with your sleeping window, you know, you can't eat when you're sleeping. Uh, but it's possible to stay fa fast, stay fasted longer uh, than while you're just sleeping, you know. For example, during Ramadan, Muslims will place their feeding window during the time when the sun is up. Uh, so around the equator, that would be roughly 12 hours of fasting time. Uh, plus the time they are sleeping, since of course they can't be eating while they're sleeping. Um, though there are Muslims that sleep during the day during Ramadan in order to have a wider window of eating, but, but I'm digressing. Regardless, due to the decreased time when people are able to eat, uh, intermittent fasting is often used as a weight loss method, since people don't have the opportunity to eat as often as before. Uh, normal durations are to have an 8 hour eating window, a 6 hour, 4 hours and so on, or just eat 5 days a week, you know, fast for 2 days a week. Um, if you only eat one meal a day, that's called OMAD or one meal a day, and it it's represented by a roughly two hour eating window when you can get all the calories for the day. If uh, fasting is used for the purpose of decreasing your weight, it can sometimes be done in conjunction with another weight loss method or diet like uh, the ketogenic diet is a normal example for this since the elevated energy levels that the ketogenic diet gives helps with you know, or the decreased hunger that it help gives helps with staying fasted during the day and not having cravings to eat. Um, regardless, what does fasting do to your body? Well, it lowers your insulin levels, which helps improve your metabolism. It also increases the production of human growth hormone, which promotes fat burning and also helps preserve your muscle mass during the weight loss. Uh, Noremfrin is also released in higher concentrations, which is a signaling hormone that tells your cells to release fatty acids and thus frees up more fat to be burned. But that's not all. There's also evidence of fasting slowing down the degradation of your DNA, which helps you live longer. So as you can hear, it can have a positive impact on your health, but there are also more benefits that I don't really want to touch on in this video since that would stir it away from its main purpose, but you can research those in other places. Uh, regardless, let's hop into what effects intermittent fasting has on sleep. Okay. So in terms of sleep architecture, there's evidence of fasting reducing the time when you spend in REM sleep and also reducing the, the, the amount of awakenings you have each night. Fasting also reduces the time you spend sleeping as a whole uh, or the duration of your sleep. But as Matthew Walker explains in his book Why We Sleep, that's more because of a defense mechanism for your body in order to prioritize finding food rather than eating. Um, see, when you're fasting, your body essentially thinks that it's starving uh, and will therefore prioritize finding food over sleeping. So while you spend less time sleeping, you don't actually need less sleep. Though, uh, that may not actually be the case, because after people stop being on an intermittent fasting schedule, they don't seem to get a REM rebound of sleep. Uh, this indicates that fasting actually alters your sleep need and not just the apparent sleep duration, which is really interesting. Which would actually mean that if you are fasting in an, on a fasting schedule, you actually need less sleep. Really crazy stuff. So now we talked about what fasting is and what it does to your sleep, but how does it affect polyphasic sleep adaptations? Well, your sleep deprived state makes your hunger signals go haywire, uh, which means that it will be much harder for you to stay on your fasting schedule, but 
that should subside once you're further into the adaptation. The alertness boost that fasting gives you is beneficial for staying awake longer, but on the other hand, eating is also a pretty good way to stay alert. So while I understand why some, pe why some people may uh, want to keep their fast up during their polyphasic adaptations, it's somewhat hard to actually pull off due to the changes in appetite that sleep deprivation induces. But your personal experience may vary, so test it out if you want to try it and just change it to a wider eating window if you aren't able to keep it up on your polyphasic schedule. And then once you've adapted you can change it back to a smaller one, you know, no harm done. Regardless, the community recommendation for fasting is that you should avoid eating during the dark period and two to three hours before any sleep. If you don't know what the dark period is, we have a whole playlist where we talk about it and I encourage you to check it out. The link to it will be in the description. Regardless, because of these recommendations you will automatically be required to fast when you're awake during the night, which will be a bit harder to get into in the beginning, but once you've done it for a few days, it should be much easier. If you have a really strong need to eat during the dark period, make sure it's a small meal like an apple, but generally avoid trying it altogether. So yeah, what this essentially entails is that your polyphasic adaptation will automatically have a fasting window. So if we look back at what I said about it extending your life, you know, that's another perk for polyphasic sleeping. You know, just as a quick side note. But okay, there's also some evidence of strict feeding times being optimal for a circadian stability. But I feel like it's better to dedicate a whole video to that instead of going into it into this one because it's starting to get quite long. Um, and it will be better fit into the dark period series since that's where we talk about the circadian rhythm as a whole. If you're interested in seeing such a video, I suggest you subscribe and, and so you know turn on the bell icon so you don't miss when we actually upload the video. But regardless, what's your experience with fasting and polyphasic sleeping? Do you feel like fasting while adapting makes the adaptation easier or harder? And did you have trouble keeping your restricted uh, eating window while you were adapting? Please, I'd be really interested in hearing your experiences, so share them in the description below. Anyways, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Nap well, people!